can only add and subtract the ones that have like terms, same letters. But as soon as they become multiplication and division questions, that rule no longer applies. You can multiply and divide anything. They do not have to be like terms. Okay, so there's a reminder here in the first dot point that when we have a multiplication and division, you don't normally see those signs. You don't normally see the multiplication sign or the division sign. Instead, 3 times A is the same as 3A. They're written next to each other and it means multiply, doesn't it? And a divide, we write that as a fraction, A over B. Okay, so you won't see very many multiplication or division signs um, in those kind of problems. Um, next dot point says to multiply algebraic terms, multiply the coefficients and then write the pro numerals in alphabetical order. Okay, so this is the kind of question that you're going to have here. 5x times 4y. Now this is what we call expanded form here. I don't expect you to write this part, but that is what it's asking you to do. You need to multiply the 5 and the 4. So you've got the 5 and the 4, and that's how you get the 20. The letters, the letters are different, but that doesn't matter for multiplication. The letters just collect up at the end, and usually we like to put them in alphabetical order. It's just a bit of a, again, you don't get marked out if they're not in alphabetical order, but answers in textbooks will pretty much always be that way. Okay? When dividing an algebraic expression, always cancel any common factors first. So, for example, 2x over 8x, both of those can be divided by 2. If I divide that by 2, then I only have the x left, and 8 divided by 2 gives 4. And I'll be showing you how to simplify those kind of things on your calculator as well, okay? All right, so this is what you have to do. Example 1, I want to simplify. So you can see there are multiplication signs in here. We're multiplying. That means we want to multiply the numbers. So I have a 4 times 3, which is 12. Good. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12. And any letters collect up afterwards. So there's only an A, so it's 12A. Clayton, write it down. Question B, same deal. I'm multiplying. So I multiply the numbers. It doesn't matter that one of them is a negative number. You can multiply negative numbers. What is negative 5 times 2? Yes. Now, I have M for the first one and MN in the second one. They're going to collect up. What do you think happens when you have an M times another M? Yes. So we don't tend to go M, M like that. Instead, we go m squared, meaning there's two of them, and also an n. So there was two m's and one n, and that's how we write it. Question two, those fraction, that fraction line there means to divide. So to do it without a calculator, you'll be looking at the 7 and the 14 there and going, what can I divide by? You would get to, but you're dividing by 7, correct? Which means I'd go, all right, I can divide by 7. 7 divided by 7 goes once, and 14 divided by 7 goes twice. Now, I am fully aware that times tables is not everybody's favourite thing, so this is where the calculator can really come in handy. If you can't see the common factor, the thing to divide by, all you need to do is type in the number part. We can't type in the letters but I can type in the 7 over 14 and press equals and it tells me the 1 and the 2 that I need to go here, 1 over 2. Okay, calculator simplified it down for me and it told me the numbers to put in. Okay, now when you're dividing, the letters are going to cancel off if there's one on the top and one on the bottom. So the ends, the N on the top, N on the bottom disappears. There's only one M. So it has to stay there. Once I've cancelled everything off that I can cancel, I want to write down what's left. On the top of that fraction, I have a 1m. Do I need to write the 1? No. no, because an m by itself like that, we know that that means that there's a 1 in front of it. On the bottom, the only thing left is the 2. 
So M over 2 is the most simplified answer, and that's what we've been asked to do, simplify. So you want the most simplified answer. Question 2B, this one does actually have a divide sign. It is the same kind of process as this, okay? It's just written, instead of being a fraction form, it's written as a divide sign instead. Now, numbers first, can I divide those numbers? 16 divided by 4. Do they divide nicely? Yes. What is 16 divided by 4? Yes. So 4. Don't worry about the brackets. They're just there to say I'm dividing by all of that. The letters. Remember when you're dividing you want to cancel letters. So if I have an A here and an A there, they can cross off. Now the B squared Remember that means there's two of them. So I want to cancel this one off with one of those, which means there'd be one B left. Now I have divided everything away, because I've, I've done the numbers, they divided. The only thing that's left in the letters is a B. So four B is the answer to that. Yeah? Gets easier the more you practice. Let's do some more. Example three, simplify. First one is a multiplication. So when I multiply, what's the first thing I do? Times the number, that's right. Three times two is six. Next, I look at the letters. What am I gonna do with those letters? No, cancels for dividing. I'm timesing again, I got back to timesing, yes? Yes, because there's two of them, this is when they build up. Timesing they build up, dividing they cancel off, okay? So that would be an A squared because there's two of them, and a B. Okay, you've got to make sure you get all your rules clear in your head. And B, that fraction, means that this is a division. So the numbers, can I divide those numbers? H divided by 2, what is that? Four. So that divide by that, I get a four. What about the x's? I have two of them on the top and one on the bottom. Cancel the one off the bottom with one of the ones on the top, which means there'll be one left. There's still one left on the top there, so four x. And that's it. That's multiplying and dividing.